Skyfall TD Eamon O'Keefe has decided to stay in the party and to refrain from any campaigning against the EU treaty as demanded by his party leader Micheál Martin. Now this of course ends days of speculation about whether the former deputy leader would in fact leave the party in order to be able to campaign for a no vote on May 31st. He's with us now. Eamon O'Keefe, good evening to you. Well you huffed and you puffed but in the end you bottled it. No, I wouldn't agree with you, Richard. There were two choices to make. The choices became very apparent on Friday evening. Uh, choice number one was to be silenced for three weeks uh, in relation to the fiscal compact treaty and the referendum. And the other choice then was to be able to say what I wanted for three weeks, but to lose the support uh, and the work of the huge number of Fianna Fáil people who would see it the way I see it. And it was a very hard decision. It wasn't an easy decision. So but I think... You're, I think you're, you're letting them down, aren't you? You say that there's no, a considerable uh, support for your view, for the anti-treaty view. Yes, but the support... Why not give them the leadership then that they require? Well, funny enough, but all the messages that were coming in in the last 24 hours in particular were nearly unanimous. I'd say 90% people saying to stick in with Fiona File and to work through the party to bring change about, because in... Change, change to what, though? Change to the kind of policies that we're following in Fiona File. But that obviously on, this one I don't On the agree single with. biggest issue to confront this country, and you've said yourself that this is a massive issue for yeah, the absolutely. country, and it split yeah. the country. The single biggest issue, when it came to the crunch, you held your wish, and when, when uh, Micheál Martin said, get back in your box, you got back in the yeah, box. Yeah, because the choice was either to do that or isolate myself permanently in politics because I have seen over very many years how you become totally isolated when you become an independent and that you're, you, you don't have the same ability to persuade large numbers of people to your position as you would within a party. Well, you and said this is a very difficult... Uh, sure. Uh, and, you know, this is the old Desi O'Malley dilemma that was arisen. You might remember when Charlie Hawhey told Des O'Malley to shut up about the Anglo-Irish yeah, yeah. agreement. Now, would, would, you liken, would you liken me, Hall Martin, to Charlie Hawhey on this? Well, what I'm saying is the same syndrome. But is it una doce, una voce? Well, what I'm saying is the exact same situation. Uh, is O'Malley return was told, to the bad old days where people can't speak what their I'm saying, mind? You can make that judgment. I'm saying the actual fact of the matter was that you might remember that Des O'Malley sure. was told that he couldn't disagree with the party under Anglo-Irish agreement, which was another constitutional you, you issue. You and said. he continued speaking. But I think a lot of people would say that Des O'Malley, by leaving Fiona File, by allowing himself to be forced out of Fiona File, took the wrong option and that he, in fact, won back in government. You, said, you, you, you said today that you were opposed to this treaty with all of my heart and all of my mind. Right. And yet you're prepared to let that slide in order... If you like, some people might see it to save your own political skin. No, I wouldn't say... I, if I wanted to save my own political skin, Richard, it would have been very easy for me to just keep my head down. I knew I was in a minority position in the party. I had gone to the party leader about this issue personally. I had spoken at the parliamentary party. And if I was about saving my political skin, the easy answer was to keep my head down, say not, and just say, well, so what? My political benefit is to remain as deputy leader of Fiona Fáil. Now, by... Coming out by very, being very open about this, uh, I've lost the deputy leadership of Fiona Fáil, I've lost my position on the front and bench of Fiona Fáil. you've lost credibility, Fáil, haven't you? Uh, and the clear choice of the vast majority of members of Fiona Fáil, and they are a huge number, uh, who support my view is, we'll work together within the party for change rather than outside it. Do you still have full faith and confidence in Micheál Martin as the well, leader? Micheál Martin is the elected head of our party. He has his views and I will continue as a member of the no, parliament. that wasn't party. what I asked you. I mean, what I asked you was, do you have full faith and confidence in Micheál Martin as the leader of Fianna Fáil? Oh, yeah, as the leader of Fianna Fáil, absolutely. And there's the, the, the suggestion that perhaps that what's this, what this is about really is about your leadership ambitions and you're waiting your chance and that outside of the party, obviously, no hope, but you're biding your time. Well, if I had leadership ambitions... The obvious thing to do, as I said in my speech today, would have been to keep my head down, bide my time and work from the inside. But you're having uh, it both ways, aren't no, you? No, no, I'm you not. You had three weeks I, of campaigning, no. no. I, then when, when Micheál Martin called your bluff, you shut up. No, what actually happened is that I gave a speech in the Davenport. It was reported on the front page of the Irish Times. I gave a speech in the Dáil. I was on uh, the Vincent Brown show and so on. I was perfectly you've been, open. You've been chipping away. You've been, part of, the, no, you've been part if, of an unofficial Martin, no campaign. Micheál Martin... I've been open about it, mm. absolutely open about it. As a so you're, you're really it. taking... And you're... if Micheál Martin had a difficulty about it, all he had to do was pick up the phone and tell me. If you, if you... When we're sitting beside each other in the dial, voting because our seats are adjacent, he could have told me that. Could they have expelled you 
if you'd continue to talk? Oh, yes, of course. And, and, and would you have challenged that legally? Well, uh, I would have considered it, yes, but uh, on reflection, I wouldn't like to divide either the national executive or the parliamentary party over me. Well, I mean, the letter that the, the Chief Whip, Shauna Fareel, sent to you, at the end of the letter he says, I think we need to put this controversy aside. And then what you do is you call a press conference, you leave everybody waiting for three or four days, you say that you're about to make a momentous decision, you get up in the Plinth and Leinster House, you get another spake at this, another opportunity to tell people why they should vote no, and then at the end of it, the momentous decision amounts to you keeping shtum. Is yeah, that, that's hardly that, and, burying and, the controversy, uh, is it? I think it is a very momentous decision for me to say that I'm not going to say anything about this in the next three weeks. And to be quite honest, Richard, every day last week, I was over in uh, Cambridge one day last week, and the amount of phone calls on my message minder from RTE and other journalists asking would I talk to them was literally incredible. And therefore, this idea that suddenly, because I say I'm staying in Fianna Fáil, that the media is a bit huffed, that I didn't do what they'd like me to do, uh, you know, amuses me to be quite frank, uh, because they were literally after me every day right. for the last week. If, on if, Friday, I got a letter. I said to the people who asked me that I would reflect over it, uh, on it over the weekend. But you had a fair old run first. If, well, if, what if, do you mean if, had a fair if, old run? Well, you had a fair old a number of weeks to have a go at this, even though you knew Sorry, that you I, had caused I, displeasure I, to the party. You knew I, that when you I lost did not the know deputy leadership. Was any difficult to, because nobody within the but party... But why did you lose the deputy leadership? Oh, that was at the beginning, because that was the price. It was clear at that no, point. Obviously. It wasn't clear at that point that they didn't want no, you to be part of a no campaign. No, and you continued for the clear? last two what months clear? to be part of a no, no campaign. No, was clear. You couldn't be on the front bench. Or and you, you thought it was OK to be on the back bench. Oh, and the back benchers always have, uh, I suppose... On a crucial can... issue like this, which had gone through the Ardesh, and you were to, it was to be a united voice, and still you were chipping away, and you knew it was uh, causing uh, the say, party the embarrassment, you knew it was causing the party leader embarrassment, and you knew it could damage him, and still you kept talking. Well, what I think is quite interesting is the reaction to media this evening, because in the Desimani case, they've always written the history, that Meso Desimani was right to keep talking, to the point he actually got thrown out of the party, uh, and in my case, when I kept talking, I seemed to have been wrong. There were both major constitutional issues. There were both issues that each one of us felt very deeply upon. But the reaction to the media in one case is polar opposite of the reaction in another case. I suppose people tonight, very final, uh, final quick, quick, quick question to you. People wonder, will you really be able to keep your mouth shut now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Eamon O'Keefe, thank you for coming in.